Alright, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be doing a number logic video. Number logic learning tutorial video nerd stuff. We're going to be learning some nerd stuff with number logic. One of my favorite things to do in Scrap Mechanic lately is building these number logic creations, giving like new life to them. As you can see, this Skultala follows me around just like it does in Ocarina of Time. And if you get close to it, it drops down to fight you. And of course it has like a little bit of a fighting pattern as well, just like in the game. Uh, it turns around every so often, so... To beat these things, you're supposed to hit them in the back until they explode in a fiery ball of flames. They explode. Bam! You beat the Skulltula. So today, I'm going to show you guys how to build something like that. Uh, I'm not going to show you the, the entire thing, because over here we also have the uh, inner innards of a Skulltula. You can see it here. It doesn't have the body. But uh, you can see it's pretty much the same thing there. So as you can see, it is quite a bit of logic, and I'm not going to teach you like the entire thing today because it's just too, too much. Uh, but I'm going to show you one part of it. We're going to show you how to do just the piston distance part. Get rid of this leg here. We don't need this leg. But today, I'm going to show you guys how to build a piston that automatically tracks the position that you want it to be. In this case, I'm tracking the player's altitude. So let's go ahead and show you a with a jump. Like this piston, this piston, no matter what height it is, no matter where it is in the map, this piston wants to follow my altitude. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this thing up, and uh, you guys can use it for whatever you want. Maybe it's a fancy spud gun turret, or maybe it is a Skulltula. Who knows? Who knows? Whatever you need a piston to automatically track. And I'm going to show you guys something. It doesn't have to be altitude either. You can actually track whatever you want. It can be the XY position of a player, or it can be the XY position of a, of a, of a bot. If, uh, if we update that orient block to include farm bots or something. So the first thing that you're going to need is a piston. I'm putting down the blue mod pack piston because it goes up to 256 blocks. I'm not going to be limited by 16 blocks. I think it's a very good creative mode piston. You get all the length that you ever need. Also, I think the developers didn't update on their pistons, so I'm not sure if the smart engine works on the vanilla pistons anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Of course, if you haven't checked out the Number Logic tutorials on the Scrap Mechanic Mods channel, I highly recommend you check those out. Uh, those are the beginner tutorials, and today we're going to be hopping right into some how to use this stuff. So don't uh, don't don't skip ahead if you're not too too familiar with the Number Logic parts. Uh, definitely go check out at least the basic videos, and then. Uh, come back here and check out what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be controlling this piston for altitude with a smart engine controller. Okay, so we're going to need one input for the actual height of the piston, one input for the speed of the piston, and that's it. The default power is 10,000, although if you really, really wanted to increase power, you can do that. Okay, so the basics of a smart engine setup is that you got to give the smart engine some number inputs and then tell it what to control, whether it's a bearing or a piston. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be giving this smart engine some information about how fast to control the piston and what length to extend it at. It's going to be a counter block. I know that's going to be a little uh, unorthodox for some programmers out there just being like, why are you using a counter block for that? But you're going to see, you're going to see, you're going to see, you're going to see. But you're going to see with a speed of one, two, three, four, five. With a speed of like 50 blocks per second of a piston movement, that's really, really fast. That's really, really responsive speed. So whatever distance this ends up saying, uh, we need to get there really quickly. So we are going to need an orientation block to track our target, which in this case is the player, the player's altitude. Uh, so again, that information is available in the tutorial videos on how to use these parts. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go do set this up. We set up a orientation block for player. So if you've seen the tutorial videos, you already know how the orient block works. But don't worry, we're not doing any like automatically tracking turrets or uh, tank controls or, or like camera control driving for our vehicles. Now today we're abusing this other feature of the orient block where you put down an exometer, say speed or velocity. No, 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 no. Altitude position X. So you can actually put down a bunch of exometers like this. And exometers normally give you like the speed position and altitude of whatever you put it on. Right now it's giving me the information for these yellow blocks that I put it on. But if I connect it from a orient block like this, tracking the player, then these exometers are now gonna give me the information for the target of the orientation block, in which case the player, in which case me. So these things are gonna be giving me my speed, position X, position Y, and altitude. There you go. So now you can see a regular altitude exometer is showing 54.5. We connect here and we see 56.7 because that is the player's height. That is the player's altitude being measured by that meter. Oh, and you can <laughs> and you can see the speed speedometer, the speedometer, and you can see the speedometer going crazy there too. 
Anyway, let's get rid of some of the stuff that we don't actually need. Uh, right now, we're going to measure the player's altitude. And then we also want to measure the piston's altitude. We actually want to measure where this piston is right now. So let's go ahead and slap down another altitude meter. Altimeter? Altimeter. We're going to slap down these two right there. Bing, boom. You might have noticed in the math block, a lot of these functions here, if you look at them like, the correct way, uh, a lot of these functions have a white and a black dot. Uh, and that's just to give you order of operations for any of these functions. So you want to do the, you know, di the top divided by the bottom number or modulus or exponent. Like you don't want to have, you don't want to have the wrong number for the exponent and the, the wrong number for the base. We're going to take a couple of math blocks, uh, less than and greater than. So there you can see white is less than black. White is greater than black. We're going to take a measurement for each of these exometers. So we paint one of the black and the, one of them white. It doesn't really matter which one's which, you just have to remember which one's which. That's uh, that's the only thing that matters right here. You just have to remember which one's which. So player in this case is white for me. And uh, we're gonna connect both of them to both of them, like this. So each block is giving me a measurement of if, uh, if the player is currently above the current altitude of the piston or below the current altitude of the piston. And now we go below the piston and then you can see you can see the lights change up because the measurements of each of those altimeters is uh, inverted, right? So if I'm above the height of the piston, we know to send it an upward signal. Extend the piston upwards. If I'm below the height of the piston, we know to uh, retract the piston downwards, right? So now we already have some information here about which way's up, which way's down. Now normally you might actually be able to use something like this if you actually were to paint this brown like that. So orange is up, brown is down, and you just hook those right up into the, uh, <laughs> you hook right, th <laughs> you hook those right up into the counter block. So as you can see, this is actually a basic circuit that does work to track the player's altitude. Let's go ahead and hop on my lift to show you. Uh, so as I increase altitude, you can see that piston is trying its best. It's trying its best to keep right to the target altitude. Although you can see it's constantly overshooting it. Uh, so you you might be able to think that, okay, well, what if we just bring it back down a bit? What if we just bring the speed back down a little bit? So go ahead and reset that back down to 10 blocks, and you can see the problem is still there. It's Yes, it's a slower piston, but it's still overshooting quite a bit. As a matter of fact, it seems like it's overshooting the same amount, just slower. <laughs> so the reason why this is happening, again, these, these uh, up and down signals are counting the counter by very constant values. So every single tick, it's getting a signal of one. Add one block, add one block, add one block. Even if the piston is on target, it might still be getting a signal to go another block up or down. And then it's overshooting a couple of extra blocks, bit of a tick delay between these parts, like one tick, two tick, three tick, bam, into the engine, bam, to set the piston. So that's why there's a little bit of a delay. Even for this setup over here, there's always gonna be a tiny, tiny bit of a delay just like a reaction time for this logic to catch up. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this up uh, properly. Let's go ahead and give the, you know, get rid of these signals here. So we have this up down signal, except it's a little bit uh, too, it's a little bit too binary if you ask me, right? Like it's just positive one, negative one, up or down. Uh, instead, what I wanna do is if I'm really, really far from the target, I want it to go up by a lot. And if I'm really, really close to the target, I want it to go up by just a little bit. So now I'm gonna build a simple number logic circuit to accelerate and decelerate this piston towards its target altitudes. Uh, and it's actually a heck of a lot simpler than you might think. And we're gonna get uh, subtraction. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the player's altitude from this altitude. It's subtracting the player's current altitude with the piston's current altitude, and we're just getting the difference. Uh, this also is pretty useful because it does give us the direction. So if I'm below the piston, it gives us a negative number. If I'm above the piston, it gives us a positive number. This is like saying, okay, how far does the piston need to go from where it currently is? So we're going to take that number and we're actually going to multiply it. Bam, bam. What are we going to multiply this fancy number with? Well, we're going to multiply it with the on off signal, the up down signal. So whatever these up-down signals are going to be, we're going to put both of these up-down signals into the counter block. Uh, so only one of them is going to be active at, at the same time, and it's only going to be active by a certain amount. That's what this multiplication is. Uh, I also need to invert one of the sides uh, just by changing it back down to negative. I don't know which one yet, uh, so let's go ahead and find out. Uh, this one is painted brown. 
So I'm going to try painting this one brown as well. I'm going to paint it the light brown so that it goes down by negative 0.1. And then this one light brown or light orange, I should say, uh, so that it goes up by 0.1. Again, if you're a little bit confused by what I'm doing with these like paint colors, check out the number logic tutorial videos that explain in detail what these colors do. Uh, you need to be able to know what I'm doing so that you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and connect these straight up, just like that, bing, bang, boom. Just like that, I'm pretty sure that's the one that I need to invert, is the up signal. Calm yourself. Calm, bring, bring it back down. There you go, paint that brown. Bam. And just like that, that's all it takes. That That's really all that it takes. Like, you can barely see anything happening on this, uh, on this piston. It's so stable. So stable, and that's because we're multiplying it by something very, 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 very small. <laughs> so our target height, like our, our difference, is not uh, is not very much, right? So the up down signal that it's getting is so microscopic. It's just uh, like oh, we're a little bit below the piston. We gotta microscopically go up a little bit, microscopically until we get back up, and then once we're above it, we're gonna microscopically let it go back down again. Yeah, see, there it is. <laughs> so just adding this multiplier to the up-down signals, uh, that's what smooths out this piston's motion. And again, you gotta keep in mind that uh, our speed value is like still set to 50 blocks per second. It's literally just the multiplier value that's multiplying like 50 blocks, move 50 blocks upwards. No, 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 we're multiplying it by, what was that, 0 0.01? One thing though to keep in mind is that uh, this piston is not protected in the sense like I put it up here up on the sky and uh, I, I want to show you guys something I want to show you there's actually like something wrong with this piston um I mean as as fancy as this is oh oh also I want to show you guys uh to do the uh, on off switch you just go like this bam bingy -de bam boom set the switch on the engine the smart engine controller can be turned on and off so bam just like that oh yeah so about that about that <laughs> This is the problem. This is the problem that I've got to show you guys. Okay, so let's show you guys the problem with the switch first. Uh, you go ahead and put the power switch onto that, and you saw when I turned it off and back on, it started behaving weird. Uh, so you want to also add the power switch to your multipliers as well. Oops, not that. There you go. Also add that to your multipliers as well, so that when you turn it off, there is no such thing as a signal up or down being put into this block measurement thing, right? You're not going to get anything weird when you turn it back on again. Except that you are, uh, because it goes to rush back to its last altitude. So there's one more feature then that I got to add. One more thing that I got to add here. Uh, this is just going to be a regular logic gate, and we're going to pick a NOR gate. And we're also going to paint it white. Again, doing some fancy paint colors for number logic. Check out the number logic tutorials. Right, so you just connect that directly to your counter block here. A white logic signal into the counter block resets it completely just like as if you press E on it just like that and I just reset the altitude to zero uh, so that's what this white logic gate is gonna do as well but only when I switch it off right so we're gonna switch off the engine we're gonna switch off the multipliers and we're gonna reset the current height of the piston BAM so it goes back down to zero so when I press the switch again it starts from an altitude of zero and accelerates upwards to there, and it doesn't rush back to its last altitude. Because uh, that's a little bit of a dangerous thing to have a fast-moving piston like that. You definitely want it to accelerate and decelerate to its target. So that's this is the full setup. This is the exact full setup that I did right over here. You flick the switch, and this is exactly what's going on right here. Oh, oh, and you might notice that this has two pistons, right? That's because the smart engine can control as many number of pistons as you want. As many as you want. Whatever it is. <laughs> what it, You know, I'm going to put another piston on a piston just to show you. They can still be controlled by the smart engine. That's pretty strange, huh? Pretty... <laughs> that's that's, that's kind of weird to see, like, what... What is this? The Council of Blocks on Pistons are here to judge me. So yeah, that's actually the complete setup for an automatically tracking altitude piston. Uh, there is one more thing though that I gotta show you guys. Uh, like Just like this on-off uh, mistake here, how the piston was behaving a little bit weird. There's another mistake in this piston as well. If you go beneath the altitude where you physically placed the piston, right there, 
So right now, it's counting down, continuously counting down, counting down. The piston's trying to go downwards, but it can't go downwards anymore. And it's constantly getting the signal, hey, my current altitude's here. It needs to be where the player is. So when we go back up, now you can see that the piston is doing absolutely nothing to get back up to the player. And that's because it's catching up. It's currently trying to count up as fast as it can. There you go. To go right back up, overshot a little bit. Why is it overshooting? There you go. <laughs> there you go, it caught up. So this part is entirely optional. I'm gonna show you guys how to add protection for your automatically moving piston so that it doesn't try to go down further than it's able to. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a lazy solution for that. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this altitude block here. Uh, and as you can see, like it's definitely it's definitely higher up than the minimum piston height. Uh, but I'm, I have this one block difference here just to make sure that it works. We're gonna compare if the black dot is greater than, there we go. If the black dot's greater than the white dot, then we can safely, this gives us a number one signal, right? Bam, now it's zero. One, zero, one, zero. So we already know, uh, like this is, I'm putting this altimeter right here as the minimum piston height. Uh, I'm like, I could put this anywhere that I wanted to, right? This is just gonna give us a one or a zero, right? And that is actually super convenient because I'm already using multiplications for the directions up and down. Down and up, up and down. So we're gonna go ahead and take this one and zero and we're gonna connect it to the down signal. So that way, as long as I'm above, I mean, it's getting, it's, it's getting uh, multiplied by zero anyway. If, it's, uh, if it doesn't need to go down and then it doesn't need to go down. There you go. See, right now I'm beneath the piston and I can keep on going beneath it even further. Let's go down here. And you can see it's not gonna retract it down any further. It actually stopped. That's because of this protection block over here, multiplying the multiplier by zero. Hey, it's underneath the minimum height, so multiply by zero. And then back up, and it just turns on again. <laughs> so you might notice, you, you might notice this uh, jumping it's really oh yeah that's because that's because I left the the speed at uh, 10 right 20 30 40 50 there you go the speed of 50 is definitely supposed to make that more responsive there you go see that no more overshooting just from a simple jump although you do want to be a little bit careful because like you might you, you know you might be thinking right now okay why not just make that piston speed super super fast then because you are giving it a multiplier anyway right so you're gonna you're you're not gonna go up 50 blocks you're gonna go up half a block when you're, you know, multiplying it by hundreds of a digit. Uh, so let's just go ahead and show you then what the problem is. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You don't want to set your pistons too fast. Oh my god. Just got to make sure uh, my speed value is 50. My length input is just a counter block that's being counted up and down by a greater than or less than value of two altimeters. Adjust, 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 adjust by little microscopic amounts, up and down signals by little microscopic amounts. And that's how you can build a piston that uh, no matter where you put this piston in the world, it's going to want to be at your altitude. The exact same altitude that you're at, it's gonna to wanna to be there too. Check it out, check it out. This, this piston set up, this piston set up. They all wanna be on the same altitude because that's where I am. So again, keep in mind that this orient block can do this with any target. And right now I'm tracking a tracker a tracker that's on my lift right here. It can be on a vehicle, it can be wherever you want. This can be done with any targeting information in the orientation block. Uh, so one thing that I'm looking to do actually, I'm looking to upgrade the orientation block to include some like farm bot targets. Like include the, you know, target the closest tote bot, target the closest hay bot, target the closest farm bot, or you know, target the closest any bot. Those would be really, really cool functions to have. And I think that would be the next step into bringing some of this number logic stuff into survival mode. That'd be pretty cool. Let me know which you guys think though. Now this you already seen, it's a it's a double piston setup uh, doing for the position X and position Y. So it's actually the exact same setup, the exact same setup, except you're using two meters because one in the, you're only doing one axis at a time. So it's either X at a time, uh, Y at a time, or altitude at a time. Uh, like you, you can only do one at a time. So that's all it is. And you can see it's like pretty, pretty responsive no matter what it is. Uh, like if, for whatever reason, if you wanted something to follow you around. So one thing to keep in mind is that like this stuff can be used for pretty much anything that you can imagine. And that's the very powerful thing about number logic and scrap mechanic is that it really depends on like what you set out to create. Uh, so this, like for example, this thing, I had no purpose for this like uh, horizontal position XY auto tracking thing until I slapped the light on it. 
until I slapped the light on it, then I realized, wow, this is actually pretty darn useful. I can actually do so many useful things with this. Uh, and it, like, again, it just, it depends, it's up to your imagination entirely. So it's super worthwhile to learn how to use the number logic stuff because it gives you so much potential, so much capability that you didn't really have before. If I'm thinking about this stuff, like, oh, I just, I just broke my logic. Uh oh, whoops. Don't hold right click randomly, folks. Just don't hold, <laughs> don't hold right click randomly. Uh oh. Uh-oh. So that's all that I have for today for these uh, super nerd tutorials, these uh, number logic how-to. So if you guys like this sort of thing and you definitely want me to make more videos like this to show you how to build some cool functions out of number logic stuff, uh, then you obviously hit the like button, right? <laughs> obviously hit the like button, subscribe for more, but also in the comments, put down any suggestions like what do you want to learn next right like I said the Skulltulla had a lot of logic stuff going into it like that flipping logic hold on let me just where where oh, oh calm down calm down calm down all right <laughs> like this flipping logic where it knows to flip back and forth every three seconds but only when the Skulltulla is extended downwards it doesn't do that when it's upwards right you, you go back and it doesn't do the flip back and forth anymore so there is a lot that you can do with this number logic stuff, and it really depends on your imagination, what you want to build, what you even can think of building. That's uh, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Uh oh, let's crush myself. Blech. <laughs> anyway, so do you want to learn how to build something in number logic? Leave them down in the comments below, and uh, maybe the most upvoted question, uh, I'll show you guys how to build it in the next number logic video. Calm down. Cal cal calm down. Would you calm down. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's my my amateur hour spotlight. I don't pay him enough because he's an amateur and he, I get the amateur work for it because I don't pay him enough. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh that? That you don't you don't need to you don't need to pay attention to that. That's uh that's another video. That's another video coming up. You don't need to pay attention to that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it useful. Thank you guys for your support, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Mehehe. <laughs> what are you gonna do now when you can't extend this way? Mehe. Oh.